Welcome back, my friends. My name is Eric. This is Rome, and we're back with some more Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader from Owlcat. Uh, we need to do some level ups real fast. We have landed on Janus. We've, we've, we, we had a nice little fight. Uh, and it looks like this one will go by quickly, because it looks like we don't have a choice on this one. We're going to get our heroic act for our second archetype. Uh, so until the end of combat, Arch Militant can make one additional attack each turn, uh, including additional attacks on the, the turn it was used. I actually really like this one. Uh, I've enjoyed it in my other save. And so we'll, uh, we'll continue that one. This one, Grand Strategist. We choose one combat tactics area. Every ally in that area gains an additional turn with one AP and two MPs at the start of the Grand Strategist next turn. Every enemy that was killed in the selected combat tactics area, the additional AP is increased by one, up to three, and additional MP is increased to two. Okay. Interesting. We'll see if I can uh, make that happen. Um, my other save, I'm not actually playing any grand strategists because I decided they were too complicated for my feeble mind to figure out early on here. Vanguard. Until the next turn, the Vanguard attacks every enemy that attacks the Vanguard's allies in a three-cell radius around the Vanguard. Additionally, until next turn, Vanguard always retaliates when attacked. Because I normally run melee, I don't know that that super works real well. Um, we'll just have to remember if we want to do that, we'll switch over to his ranged weapon so that he can continue to get those shots and those attacks, even though he's maybe not going to be next to him. Orchestrated Firestorm, 3x3 um, three three zone, all allies, including the Master Technician, have line of sight to any enemy inside the zone, make an immediate single attack against a random enemy. Perfect. I like that one a lot. <clears throat> um, another Grand Strategist. And Assassin gets um, makes an attack against with the current weapon against an enemy. Cannot miss, deals 50% more damage. Deals additional damage equal to 25% of the character's missing wounds. So if they've missed, if they had 100 health initially, they've lost 50 of those. Well, they've lost 40 of those, we'll do 10 more damage. Something like that. Again, I don't know. I mean, it's a finisher, right? Um, maybe for big, it's a finisher for big boss mobs more than anything else. Our dodge, dodge reduction, our penetration, pair reduction are doubled for this attack. All right. Easy, easy. Skill up. All right, let's take a look at uh, weapons and stuff. What am I running right now? I've got the Thunder Hammer and I've got the Blast Wave. Is that where I want to stick? I don't have a huge number of options. I would really like to use this at some point, but it does require a strength of 60. Um, we could potentially get there. That gives us five strength. Hmm. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I don't really see any big changes I want to make with him. I think I'm pretty happy with the plasma and his normal axe there as well. Hmm. Gear. Do we have any gear? Do I have any boots that I could use here for him? Whenever... The wearer raises momentum 175 whenever they kill five enemies in a row in one turn. Um, it's not likely, but it is possible, especially with the plasma. Um, we can sometimes get some really big attacks, and because of the warrior, he can sometimes kill... Ah, I just don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> um, but you know what? We'll put it on there. Better to have something on there. If we take advantage of it, great. Uh, cloakwise, what do we got there? Uh, increases melee attack damage against demons... If he's dogmatic, that damage is four. Uh, I don't remember what he is. He is dogmatic. Okay, so that'll work perfectly for him. Okay, so against demons, he's going to do plus four. How often are we going to do that? Would we rather have immune to burning? Would we rather have... Five less damage, plus coercion. Coercion is not really his thing. It's not terrible, but it's not his thing. Or, plus 15 armor against warp damage. I think we'll stick with what we've got. I think that's fine. Uh, he's got a full hand out of gear there. Uh, we could do this. What's his awareness? 50? 
We take him a lot. It doesn't hurt to have... Hold on. What, what does she have? Let's give her the awareness. Her awareness sucks. Never mind. Never mind. I changed my mind. Um, yeah, it's actually really bad. Uh, your awareness is 60. Do you have... You had a spot. There we go. We'll give it to you. And... Archetype, that's fine. Your cloak was immune to grenades, which I clearly have been... Well, I maybe I used them all. <clears throat> maybe that was the problem. Uh, we've got a stun grenade. Um, we've got... Let's just toss a couple of those down. That'll be fine. How about you, Monsoor? Let's give you a grenade, too. It's that one. Gas cloud... Sure. I find I don't really use these stims. I'm just going to go with another grenade. You're okay. And you could use some... Again, I'm going to take that out. Um, let's do a force grenade and maybe a crack grenade. No, no, we're going to take one of these. Uh, so I'm going to spread the glory and splendor. Or... Can perform various... I don't know what they actually do, but you know what? I want one. So we're taking it. And I think that'll work for us for the moment. Um, Psyker, weapon-wise. Are we happy with what you've got? We could give you this. It'll do lightning. as a No, I like the siphon. I like the siphon life. I think that's a good one. Um, you also have yours. Um, would we rather have... These are both castigating five. They're the exact same thing. I'm just going to go ahead and move that one to cargo. Uh, and these are both for sanctioned, unsanctioned. Okay. Yep. Neither of those matter. Uh, how about gun-wise? Are we happier with our rebel sniper? Solid projectile, solid projectile. This has an extra 20%. Well, an extra 5% chance to hit. Uh, but it does a little bit less damage. Has a little bit less penetration. Uh, same range. I think we stick with what we got. All right. Let's do a quick F5. It's been a little while since we kind of gone through and, and taken a look. Uh, oh, here, let's let's go this way, as long as we're down here. I don't know if this... Let us not dawdle. Lower Imperium. What do we have here? And we found some goods. Uh, some multi-keys, a hotshot las gun. Okay. Is there money to be made? Okay. Nothing there for the moment. We'll be back there. Rise to the top or get left in the dust. Head up here to the uh I think I want to check. I think there's somebody down here we can talk to. Keep your wits. That I didn't notice the first few times I played this section. And I don't know if they're going to appear right now or if they'll won't appear till later. But we're going to go take a look. Down here, down the side. Okay, they don't show up now. All right. We'll see. Which is probably why I didn't know they were there. Because that's probably usually when I explored it and didn't find them. But we'll go in first. See what the governor has to say. Governor. There we go. Press any key. Nothing there. Quick look there. Nothing there. Axeman Goldino caught her husband with the servitors again. <gasps> Sounds surprising. Your surprise sounds terribly feigned. Are you truly surprised to learn that the head of the Galdino family is seeking solace in such predictable places with servitors? Always keep your eye on the Okay. Well, I'm sure there's a website for it somewhere. Rule 34 and all that, right? Well, that's kind of harsh. I mean, it's true, but still. Funnily enough, I've grown rather attached to the old thing. Have patience. Someone will shoot me any minute now, and then you'll have your chance to upgrade me. Fair enough. 
Okay. Looks like this one is our only option. I always keep my options open. All right, upon seeing you, the guard at the door lets out a frightened yelp and doubles over with a low bow. Your lordship, the most honorable Abner von Valencius, the governor is waiting you in her office, where she is protected by walls and guards. Would you prefer to meet with her alone or with your entourage? We're going to go with her entourage. Um, I can think of one reason why I might go alone on this, um, generally speaking, uh, but I'm not going to give it away. You guys will have to come up with that, that idea on your own as the game progresses. Um, but I think for now, I'm, I'm fine going with, with people I have. So we'll, we'll take everybody in. Ah, the stench of Giannis. Vyat Ab Aram Af Coronis is furiously swiping at a data slate. Issuing commands into a gilded vox. Upon seeing you, she hurriedly puts her wear devices, smooths her skirt, and drops into a deep curtsy. Your lord, chap. Your lord. I can't talk. I do have a cough drop in, though. This is the third video I've recorded today, so we'll see. Uh, your lordship. Accept my abject apologies for the reprehensible stunt that spoiled the reception. Even my worst nightmares I could never have imagined. Um. Okay. How do we go with it? We could say I'm not offended. I am. We could say I thought firing moving at targets was part of the ceremony. We're not a psycho. Mostly. Local fuss is of no concern to me. That's not entirely true. This is my planet. It's it's a fuss that is important to me. So we're going to say, I could have been killed. I assure you, your lordship, I never... I beg you, give me a chance to prove my loyalty and explain myself. Estenza's companion standing beside her also bends into a slavish bow while reaching out to offer a reassuring touch to Estenza's hand, who immediately draws it away. Now, I don't think I've ever actually selected that option before. Um... Not that I played 800 times or anything, but, you know, this is probably the f third, fourth, at least the fourth time I've been through this section. One of your wardens helped us in battle. Superb shot. Yeah, who is that? You must be referring to Yerliot. Yerliot? I should watch somebody else and see how somebody else pronounces that. Uh, our chief ally in the struggle against the rebels. I've turned a blind eye to her horrific mutations, given the undoubted advantage she brings. You see, Iliad comes from the local degenerate stock of this world and knows Janice like the back of her hand. So she has provided several leads as to where we can find bases and secret storehouses. Although I admit that at times I'm tempted to send her away from the estate, her unnaturalist means that speaking with her always leaves me feeling uneasy. Such a gaunt, unfeminine figure. It's so tall. Did I hear you correctly, Governor Via? You have a mysterious mutant on your estate at this very moment. One of prodigious height, slight build, and with a supernatural talent for shooting. Did the arrival of this helper never give you pause for thought? Allow me to make myself clear. To refuse Yerliot's help in our circumstance would have been incredibly rash. Yes, mutants are creatures abhorrent to the Emperor, and they should be exterminated. But sometimes, humanity makes exceptions for those who can serve the Imperium. I'm not concerned with your concern that your hate is a mutant. I am far more concerned that she may be nothing of the sort. Abner, I would like to meet this helper of Governor Viatz without delay, out of professional interest. If you wish to speak to Yearly, you'll find her outside in the orangery, most likely in the gazebo. She prefers to keep her distance from others. All right, what's happening on the planet? Why were we attacked? Several months ago, uprising, uprisings broke out on Janus. I was not even notified at first. Gripping worms are for wardens to worry about. Alas, I only learned of what was happening after the miscreants began targeting noble families. And then, it became apparent that when the administratum's uh, accounts had referred to as unrest, were in fact organized attacks on infrastructure and society leaders. <gasps> it's like the British being upset we're attacking officers in the revolution. How dare they shoot our officers? Those guys are in the military. They're not there to be shot at. They have already brought uh, 13 agri-complexes to a halt and have now moved on to assassination attempts. My wardens are doggedly tracking down the rebels, but their leaders are slipping from our grasp yet again. Mm. Can Jan Janice uh, fulfill its foodstuff supplies under current conditions? I risk angering you, your lordship, but this is nothing compared to shamelessly deceiving you. 
Let us consider the situation dispassionately. Even the most talented logistic experts of the Administratum are unable to guarantee stable ties when shuttles are wary of landing at the spaceport, and the terrified peasants are indulging a dangerous minority within their ranks. Until the usual order of things is restored on Janus, any trade is nigh impossible. Reminds me of the tick. He's nigh invulnerable. Anytime somebody uses the word nigh, it reminds me of the tick. Okay. Considering what has occurred, your visit is a true blessing. You see, Janus does not have its own fleet. We could organize a planet-wide search if we had ships at our disposal. Ships like yours, your lordship. Perhaps you will find a way to support your subjects in their hour of need. I am sure even approximate coordinates would be sufficient to have the ground forces and ship's crew work together to hunt down the enemy. All right, what do we got some options? Dealing with rebels is your direct responsibility. You want me to go do it. I'm sure the rebels will have something to say. No competent people. I shall have to handle this myself. Um... I think this is the route we're going. Track down these elusive fugitives. She's not going to be permitted to fail again. Removing you from her post as governor, placing you under arrest. When I finish with the rebels, I'll decide what to do with you. Twofold, partly because the rebellion, and secondly, because I kind of see where uh, the Inquisitor is going with his hunches here. Right? So, so, and, and to be fair, we know. Um, but, but we'll go with that. I think that works for what we're doing. That's insulting, but doesn't really make a change. Um, that's very dogmatic. Nope. This is what we're going for. Your lordship, but, but I have served your dynasty faithfully and honestly. I've worked tirelessly to tame this unruly planet. Uh, as you wish. We'll see. Maybe we find that she's completely without wrongdoing and that she can be renewed restored to her spot and it's just something she she couldn't possibly be expected to handle with all of the warp lanes and stuff of changing right entirely possible not likely but possible but for now we're better off without her making bad decisions i'm gonna go back around that corner real quick and see if that that chat that i expect <coughs> <coughs> That chat that I think is there at some point is there now. Is there money to be made? And we'll skip, scoop back around here. There we go. Old servant. Hearing your footsteps, the elderly servant grabs an injector and stabs it into his arm. The area around the needle immediately starts turning black. You're too late, Viat's dogs. I'm the master of my own fate. But when he gets a better look at you, the man drops the injector in astonishment. And seems posed to prostrate himself on the floor before you. It's you! Your lordship! The god emperor must have brought you here. I beg you, help the rebels and save Janus. He doubles up, hugging himself, and is racked by coughing that leaves his lips, lips wet with blood. Forgive me, your lordship. If only knowing it was you, my eyes deceive me. We have little time now, but I swear, I'll tell you everything. Pascal, looking closely at the old man, the tech priest stutters. Nerve toxin. The inevitable cessation of vital functions is expected in no more than 60 seconds throne damn you old man where did you get this stuff poison capsules of this sort are a popular choice among desperate ash mags who are done with being tortured by mad fanatics or worse here on janice though there's no anecdote all right um say what it is you have to say and be quick about it he's only got 45 seconds now in the name of the golden throne your lordship show mercy on the humble workers the salt of janice save them vestensia Viat, the untouchable governor and leader of the nobility is creating something monstrous behind closed doors she uses the imperium's interests as a smoke screen and purports to be a scholar but her actions her actions are poisoning our planet did you know that the settlements that failed to pay their due tithes on time have been allowed to pay the people and pay with people instead they even delivered them to order sometimes old folks sometimes children i've seen those people i've seen them delivered to the estate and then they're never seen or heard from again. They go into the secret rooms. They don't come out, your lordship, ever. Peasants who were taken to Urak 5 to house House Orsilio were never seen or heard from again either. They became loyal servants and toiled for the good of the great dynasty. Why should they ever return to their filthy squalid abodes? And tell they went crazy and killed themselves. But let's not talk about that. All right. Old servant lets out a moan. The dark stain on his arm seems to creep through his veins until his arms and necks are latticework of black. 
The servant's breath quickens and becomes a regular. What secret rooms? Hidden chambers deep within the palace. I've never been inside. Thankfully, the servants who are allowed in, the ones the governor trusts, they change. She changes them, pretties them up, defiles them. I'm not sure I'll last long enough to answer your questions. Um, what else is going on in the settlements? I'll tell you exactly what I was told by the people who contacted me. These tithes, some settlements have already switched to paying with people. They say that amen amen amenable? Amenable. I think it's amenable. Settlements get special treatment from the governor's dogs. They arrange for medicine to be supplied to the settlement, then security, and then they completely isolate them. All contact between those inside the settlement and outside the world is cut off. One lad managed to get out. He's the one who told me all this, that the people are rotting alive in there. Strange growths, yellow eyes, stinking like dead bodies. The worst ones are rounded up and taken away. The fellow who escaped, he seemed fine, but within a couple of days of rebels picking him up, he started seeing monsters instead of people. They had to lock him away from their folks, from other folks, the poor sod, and then his wrists. Your Lordship, if you'll permit a dying man one last request, don't tell anyone I was the one who unlocked the doors. If you do, they'll go after my family, my home. I will keep a secret for now. Maybe, Dad. We can change our mind later. Please save us. Save Janice. Besides, he at least has paid his punishment. All right. Rise to the top or get left in the dust. Next, let's go up here towards the orangery, I guess. See if we can find this, uh... Potential mutant. How would you find? Okay. Let us not dawdle. Anything hidden back there? If there is, we didn't spot it. Oh, there's some goods there, though. Uh, tech use. Yeah, we, we got 100% to get to that one. My success is an irrefutable certainty. Can we talk to this gentleman? Yes. Uh, Vinzelix, draped in red, the Magus' body looks barely human. Wires, tubes, and metal manipulators turn him into a whimsical machine. While implants hide his face behind a sinister mask, the tech priest intermittently dictates something in Technolingua to this flo uh, servo skull floating next to him. But at your approach, he falls silently, silent and offers a reserved bow. Greetings, your lordship. Lex Mechanic Vinzelix, how may I serve you? Pascal and Lex Mechanic exchange trills of binaric greetings. A series of sounds issued by Vinzelix sounds much longer and more deferential than those by Pascal. Uh, how many servants of the Adeptus Mechanicus are on the planet? According to the data, all infrastructure nodes for food harvesting and processing have their own contingent of technomats. The total number amounts to 253. Uh, Correction, based on the latest data, the number is 211. Um, what do you do here? By order of the Adeptus Mechanicus, I am entrusted with the management of the Adeptus Administratum in order to catalog ergon, uh, agronomic data, and there we go, and, <laughs> and analyze information about the planet during the process of subjugating it to the will of the Imperium. Be blessed, Tech Brother. Your diligence and the diligence of those like you turns anarchy into order and bestows classification to knowledge. Uh, tell me about Janus. Initializing report. The planet's soil possesses a unique composition suitable for the re-engineering of the planet and mass production of foodstuffs. Significant cultivation of the Eastern Hemisphere with the aim of improving production processes and logistics operations. Traces of xeno activity that do not pose an immediate threat to ongoing operations. Undesirable pathologies of flora and fauna have been noted, which may pose a threat in the short term. Uh, traces of xeno activity? Hmm. Hiccups again. According to the data obtained during the initial survey, ruined structures of non-human origin were noted in different sectors of the planet, but I did not have the administrative capacity to study them in more detail. For now, I must defer the quest of knowledge. Lex Mechanic speaks the last words with distinct envy, his eyes fixed on Magnus Hanneman. Haha, <laughs> he really wants to know, but he's not allowed to look because it's not his job. All right, what pathologies in the flora and fauna? Genetic and chemical pathologies, your lordship. Harmless species mutate and become aggressive. While plants change their chemical composition and become poisonous. This is happening more and more often. If you do not take action, the ecosystem of the world will be irreparably disrupted. 
I'm more or less in the center. It's hard for me to tell when I'm looking down here. The changes may be artificial. Has the possibility been considered that someone is manipulating the ecosystem to reduce our living space? Not at all, Venerable Magos. I, our tech comrades for the Magos Biologists, are humble workers, not warriors. They could not have come up with the thought of such a militant nature. The mind must be open to all forms of knowledge. In order, uh, I order you to commence a check. In the event that your account of the indolence of their minds is confirmed, I will petition for an appropriate penance. Interesting. It often... It is often what seems to be insignificant anomalies like these that lead to greater troubles. How is the governor dealing with these undesirable pathologies? I analyze the genome of the affected species, and I'm currently developing suppressor genes to make the planet's organisms resistant to pathology, but so far I've not been able to solve the problem. Further exploration of the planet would perhaps speed up these processes, but the administrative apparatus has imposed a ban on expeditions that are not directly aimed at improving production. I don't know if you can hear it, but one of the dogs has a squeaky toy out there, so I apologize if you're hearing a lot of squeaking. However, both dogs are very cute, and they want to play with their squeaky toys, so it's perfectly acceptable. All right, how are things with you and your fellows? Current situation on the planet is assessed as stable. The progress of prospects is assessed as encouraging. Okay. So, not the worst, but there are definitely issues. I don't think we can talk to any of these. No, it doesn't look like it. Ah, here we go. Quick save. Iliad Lenevis greets you, Elon Tark. Regrettable news. This creature is not a mutant, as the locals assumed, but a representative of the Eldari, one of the myriad enemies of humanity. You should not trust this creature. Do not communicate with it any longer than necessary. There is no need to mutilate my language, Monkey. I speak yours well enough to converse with Elantark without a translator. And since you have discerned my path, I will be direct in my speech. My soul is nothing kin to yours. Your kind call us Xenos. As if we are all as one. I came here to protect the Lilithon by assisting the governor against her enemies. Will you hear me? Or be blinded to sense by your precepts? Um. All right, so our options. You have 10 seconds to get out of my sight. I'm not going to learn anything that way. Um, never speak to vermin. Okay, well, as a rogue trader, we need to be a little bit smarter than that because we are one of the few people that can talk to uh, Xenos. Um, keep your hands where I can see him. Uh, was it you have no desire to fight? Uh, we'll go with this one. Yeah. Hmm. Reckless. We outnumber her. Must I remind you, Master Van Kalox, that the warrant endows rogue traders with the sacred right to have dealings with Xenos when necessary? Is that just that what I said? That memory of yours seems to have let you down. <laughs> Good job, Abelard. I have banished the shadow of doubt from your thoughts regarding my nature. Now you will answer my question. Why have you sought me out? All right, well, let's start here with you're the governor's mysterious helper. I am, Ellen Tark. My hand parried the death promise to the ruler of these people, and I aided you in battle against the lost ones. Oh, wait, why are you helping the governor? This world is in distress. I wish to protect it from unnecessary suffering. Uh, what do you know about the rank and file rebels? Only that they threaten the established order. There is much risk to this world should the ruler die. This game is so much nicer when I don't have to read. All right, we passed an awareness test. Her face is unreadable, but you detect a strange tension in her voice, as though she's choosing her words carefully. Do you know who's behind the uprisings? There is a malevolence here that drives your kin down the path of violence. 
Yeah, it's not particularly helpful. But you are not asking for help, Ellen Tark. You are merely asking questions, the answers to which are either unimportant or wreathed in shadow. Explore this place. Speak to those who know. A simple task for you, and an insurmountable challenge for me, since my very appearance provokes fear and suspicion. When you learn anything, tell me. Perhaps then my answers will be helpful to your search. Okay. All right. Spoke to the mag, uh, Magos in charge of operations. He says something's wrong with this world. There are spontaneous mutations, animal attacks. Maybe you have something to say about that. The Lilithan is expressing her wrath. For centuries, this world has resisted the brutality inflicted upon it by soulless machines and unmindful creatures. But what the machine man told you, that is something else. Something more frightening. The planet is fighting an evil that has taken root in its very cradle. Uh, how did you come to be on Janus? The world you call Janus was once created by the will of my kin. No, I called it Janus. I far more right to be on the <laughs> Lilithon than any of you. Why do you call me Ellen Talk? Because that is what you are. Ellen Talk means stranger from the darkness amidst the stars. You descended on flame-winged machines in a dark time when the air of the planet is soaked in blood and pain. Will you be the one to bring peace to the Lilithon? Um, if you want, you can join me. None of the locals will dare look askance at you in a rogue trader's presence. So be it. I will go with you. With all due respect, are you sure this is the right decision? Yeah. We know nothing about this Xenos or why she has wormed her way into the governor's confidence. As far as I can tell, she isn't especially keen to help us, and yet, for some obviously dark reason, she has decided to take part in our investigation. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. At least if she's with us, we know what she's doing. My judgments and choices are for me alone, Monkey. If uniting with your master will bring peace to the Lilithon, then it is the true path. Do not get in my way if you value your next breath. Mm. You have not yet spent enough time among humans if you think threats will dispose me more favorably toward you. The decision is yours, rogue trader. But let me be clear, I will terminate your pet Xenos at the first sign of her non-compliance. I am ready, Ellen Tark. Let us go forth. All right, we're at, um, all right. She's one of the uh, uh, Asuyan, Asuyani. She is a ranger who follows the path of the outcast, and her skills in ranged combat are without equal. She does not use human weapons and can wear either Eldari armor, or if she learns the required feature, Jukari armor. Nearly its unique ability instantly ends her turn. However, the start of her next turn, she'll make an attack that always hits its target. All right, we're going to take out Cassia. And... We'll keep Heinrichs. I think that's the way I want to run this one for the moment. Yeah, I'll accept that. Got to do a quick level up for her, which is good. Give us see a little bit more about what's going on here. So she's an operative to start with. Nothing too crazy there. I guess we can take a look and see what she's got. Um, <clears throat> analyze enemies. Awareness. Exposed weakness, dismantling attack, sharpshooter. Oh, okay, so if she doesn't move, she gets more ballistic skill and damage for every five cells between her and her target. So we'd like to put her in one spot a long ways away and leave her there. <laughs> uh, took perception. Bonus to dodge. Uh, perception. Uh, ballistic. If she attacks a target affected by an exploit from a distance of nine cells or farther... It deals 15% more damage. So again, keep her far away. Um, and then we just have to make sure we get our, our exploits on it. But we've got multiple characters that can put exploits down. So that's good. Uh, attack against an exploit. Their cover efficiency is reduced and we get more hit chance. Okay. Awareness. Swift movements. 
fresh target. So if we can attack one a person for the first time, that's good. Uh, dismantling. Intimidates. Okay. And that's not bad because it, it cuts down um, their armor and their dodge, right? So that, it's not a terrible idea. Uh, Lord Xenos. Ballistic skill. Lord Xenos. Uh, grants an operative... A bonus to perception equal to the number of exploits removed, divided by two. Okay. <coughs> Medicaid, perfect spot. In cover, she gains 25% cover efficiency. <coughs> bonus to perception and ballistic skill. Laz weapon expert. Comprehensive analysis. Uh... If we get two or more exploits, they get an additional one. Okay. Uh, more ballistic skill. Swift sight. In my sights only costs cost only one IP. Some intelligence. And our dismantling attack provokes the attack of opportunity. The target also provokes an attack of opportunity whenever it attacks. All right. So we did that down here. Yeah. Also intimidates. Okay. That's this one right here. So when we do this, it also does that, and it does that. So we got some. We got a lot of upgrades to dismantling attack. Oh wait. So let's go back. Now we're going to decide where we're going to go with this. And I think probably assassin is probably the clear winner in this case. Um, and we're going to go with that. She's got seek an opening, which is good. Like that. I mean, we don't have a choice. We have to take it. Um, but we will. Uh, I'm going to go with Death Whisper initially. I find this attack is really, really useful. It's a free attack. doesn't cost us anything. Um, and again, uh, it does hemorrhaging. Uh, they suffer lethality divided by 10. Lethality is either, uh, um, I want to say, our dodge or our dodge reduction, depending on which is higher. So right now it's going to do 10 rending damage, which ignores armor and deflection. Uh, that That's great. Um, we're going to get to some of these others later. Um, but right now I'm going Death Whisper. Create an opening. This is a good one, too. Uh, if they suffer a critical hit from one of the enemy's allies, at the start, a new opening is created. Mm, maybe. Uh, each use of aim for the opening on the same target reduces their... Okay. Uh, reduces dodge and dodge reduction. Sorry about that. Uh, I, I read through it before my mouth got through it. And uh, Whenever you attack enemies at full wounds, we gain plus 20 dodge and dodge reduction against that enemy. That's not bad. I mean... We already know that we're going to want to go after people with full wounds because we already have bonuses to that. Um, so if we can get 20% dodge reduction against them, I mean, that's great. The, the odds of them shooting back at us, uh, who knows? But the dodge reduction would be nice. Um, and because it also increases our lethality, those are both count towards our lethality. So at least our lethality for that character is going to be 20% higher. Uh, first use of assassin ability costs zero, like that. Perfect opening. Uh, we get a lethality chance to deal 5%, plus 5% of a target's max wounds, more damage to the opening. That's not bad either. Um, Bringer of Doom. Single target attack. Attack reduces the target's armor and dodge by 10% until the end of our turn does not stack. Um, I'm going to go for... I'm going to go for this one. You know, we don't have a lot of assassin attacks early on. Um... Or assassin ability, but let's let's go ahead and start working on that that AP efficiency, and then we get dispatch um, for our our final there. We'll apply that. Pretty happy with that. I don't know that we have much we need to do with her. <coughs> we can definitely get her some grenades though, potentially. Um, she can use these. So let's go ahead and get her one of those. Um, let's get her a force, and then. Just a couple of rag grenades, I think it'll be fine. She doesn't have any cloaks or anything. Uh, immune to burning. What's her coercion at? 30. Damage against warp. Sure, we'll go for that for now. Armor-wise, she's good. Do we have anybody that could use this heavy armor? Yes. Would I rather use it or this? Uh, I think I'm fine with what I have. I think this one looks cool. 
Otherwise, I don't see a difference in them. Yeah, no, I like this one better. <laughs> Psychic body glove. How about y you? Is that better than what you have? Um, three times... Oh, yeah. Is your willpower more than 40? It is. Let's get you that. There we go. That's better. All right. Quick F5. Let us finish exploring this immediate area, then. Okay. He doesn't have anything for me. Keep your wits about you. Okay. Assassination attempt on the governor's own estate on the day of the rogue trader's visit, no less. Uh, La Lorena will get a. Uh... Think Lady Vi will keep the choices mostles for herself. Okay, well, I mean, everybody looks like they're doing okay, but it looks like uh, realistically the governor is uh, Done. ruling over everything. Expensive toy for nobility, pure water, currently nobling. Additional pipes indicate something else. Um. Siphons for sparkling wine and other beverages. Okay. I always have a backup plan. None are better at searching. We found oh goods down there. Okay. Medicaid. Chains and ropes with shackles on the end can be seen in the water. Something white is also vi vi visible through the glimmer, a fragment of bone with marks made by sharp teeth. Okay. Chartus pendant. Plus five fellowship and commerce. Okay. <laughs> now, I think you'll be our commerce person, right? Yep, yep. So, uh, if they're dogmatic adherent or above, uh, you're not. Um, so, we're going to get 10 lore imperium plus some fellowship and commerce. I think I'm okay with all of that. That'll be just fine. Um, that's more lore Xenos. I mean, that 10% hit percent against Xenos isn't bad. Um, plus 15 commerce would be nice, though. You're not going to be my lore Xenos person anymore, although your lore Xenos is really good. So I guess it's not terrible. I mean, what's yours, your lore Xenos is 80? Yeah, I guess technically you are still my lore Xenos person. So maybe we'll live with it for a little bit longer. Just to have that extra 10% hit chance? I don't know how often we're actively going to be shooting Xenos in the near in the near future. I know of a little bit, but it's still mostly people. The question is, will we prefer to have the extra 15% bonus to commerce? I think for the moment, we'll stick where we're at. I think that's okay. Anything else down here? All right, so there... Somebody's being brought down here and chained into the thing, and, and we're allowing people to eat them. Or, not people, but we're allowing something to eat them. Oh, we did find something here, though. Regular just goods. Always keep your eye on the price. Um, what's going on up here? One, and it's done. Chapel's... The chapel is built out of luxurious materials, but the holy place looks half abandoned. You cannot smell any burnt incense. Did you quit moving up on me here? Um, in the air, you see no seals of cleansing on the doors. You hear no prayers, no human voices or vox recordings. So they're rich and they're doing well, but the church is closed up. So we're not very pious here, are we? <laughs> that doesn't speak well. We've got a governor who's essentially closed the church has been employing a, a Xenos. As potentially sacrificing people. Trying to watch Towers of Surf's sign of a turbulent situation on the agro world. Yep, I agree. Money to be made. Anything over here? Nope. Got some uh, AA up there. Let us not dawdle. 
Dried berries. Arms and face are covered in small boils that ooze a cloudy pus. Okay. Nothing. All right. One last check back over here. Keep your wits about you. Um. Security officer, your lordship, please do not stray too close to the building. One of the terrorists from today's attack is holed up in there. He could be dangerous. Uh, what's going on here? Ready to report, your lordship. We conducted a sweep of the area after the attack. All of the assassins were arrested or neutralized except for one. He sealed himself inside. He already injured two wardens who tried to reach him, but there's no need to worry. We'll poison him and clear the last dregs of dirt from the estate. I have only one question, officer. Why have you not already done it? The rogue traitor's here. The longer you delay, the more you put this life needlessly at risk. It is inexcusable, your lordship. The barrels of poison were only just delivered, but we're ready to begin now. One ash mag is up there against all the wardens on the estate, yet he is still causing trouble? On a free, he would already been made captain and put in charge of the governor's security, for the exalted one knows that he has more brains than all of you combined. We'll fix this right away. I swear it on the throne. Um, who is he? Tell the truth, Lordship. I'm more concerned with clearing the area right now than his identity. We're not expecting any valuable intel from him, unless we find something after on his corpse after we're done. Anything special about the building? It's one of the utility buildings. Fortunately, it was empty at the time of the attack. There are no potential hostages or innocent people inside. If you ask me, I think this is the first place the killer came to when he's beating his retreat. We managed to round up all the others, but this one holds himself up in here. <coughs> this is not an empty utility building, but an inactive backup crypt for storing refrigerant and freezing equipment. This is obvious. Your ignorance is depressing, servant. Sorry. Um, I want to talk to him. Are you sure? It's not exactly safe, your lordship. I want to solve this problem without too much blood or fuss. I also want to talk to more people. They aren't going to tell me the official route. You know what I'm saying? As you wish, your lordship. <coughs> Got some local f flora and fauna. Quick save, in case you decide you want to uh, um, uh, save scum this one. <coughs> when you approach the solid-looking door, a high boyish voice shouts, Piss off! You won't take me alive! Better put a bullet in my brain than let the governor's dogs get their hands on me. we got some options here. We can coerce. Not a great chance at the moment. We can examine the door. We'll do that. That sounds like a good first option. Door looks solid and formal, but you notice dark marks on the hinges. A sure sign the metal material is degraded. Lock doesn't look new either. Suitable tool will be easily opened. <coughs> we can break it down. It's going to get us a plus 25, 75. We can do a tech use, which leaves us a 70. Um, and coercion leaves us a 45. Let's go ahead and start with coercion. Hey, we got it. <laughs> Barely, but we got it. Door opens with a quick click. All right. It really is you. Your lordship, have mercy. You're sovereign on this planet. Only you have the power to save us. <coughs> this is one of the elusive and cunning rebels the governor's been fighting for months? Really? Um, why should I listen to a filthy insurgent? No, we're going to go save you from what? From Governor Viat. Everybody here knows she's doing to us. We put up with it a long time, hoping that somebody would intervene and help us. But nobody ever did. She... She's turned the whole world into a slaughterhouse. People are rounded up like grocks from the settlements. Supposedly you go to the palace, and they're never seen again. Her servants pour something over the fields, and then people lose their minds, and they start hearing voices and seeing evil spirits. And while we're dying, she's sitting behind her white walls and feasting on our bones. <coughs> I need a drink. Hold on. Mm. Sacrifices, madness, pain, and death. Even in so primitive society as this, such rites seem senseless, not worthy of such efforts. What is this, a random quirk of nature or something darker? Uh, you're telling me people are seeing evil spirits. Yes, others are going feral and attacking their loved ones. And there's people say that in some settlements, well, they've stopped upholding the law altogether. Imperial law and the law of basic human decency. People are turning into animals. Who's behind the rebels? Your lordship, I, I bet you don't ask me that. I can't sell my brethren. It's over for me. But the others, I, I, won't, per, I, I won't betray them. Be not, we would have been nice just to have uh, Cassia here because she's got the good persuasion, I think. Um, be no end of war on this planet until I get a handle on the situation. But to do that, I need to meet with your leader. Um, yeah, let's try it. 
rolled a little bit better that time. As long as you keep your word. Of course I will. I've never been to their camp. None of us have. Only the chief saw one person from their base. He came a few times, bringing weapons and orders. He said he represented a greater force than we could imagine. And he said that the governor's dogs will pay for the reprisals in the settlements. But that's not where they're hidden. They keep their distance from ordinary folk. Oh, we got a rebel vox. We have it all worked out, so if anyone gets caught, the others aren't caught with them. But I swiped the chief's vox. I thought, after I killed the governor, I could use the message coordinates to find the base and hide out there. That's everything I know, your lordship. All right. We're going to give him an easy death. People waiting outside will put you through far worse. Goodbye. Hey, we got some goods. Wounded Rebel. He also has these wondrous wrinkled fibrous berries. Anything good? No. All right. Anything else? Some more goods in here. Ah, uh, tech use 95%. Some more keys. A disinfection device. 15 bonus to carouse. And who has our carouse? This is Abner. Does he have room for an extra spot? He does. There we go. Speaking of which, let's, uh, let's drag him to here. Let's drag you to here. Um, you're going to go there and go like that. I think that'll work. I plan on these two being part of my, my normal um, standard party uh, going forward. Uh, we're going we're gonna to maximize uh, Xenos if we can going forward. We're not, we're not going heretic. We're not going towards chaos. But we are going to, we are gonna go alien. Let's kick out here. Anything else I want to do out here? Would we like to go talk to the governor one more time? If it'll accept my clicks. Now that we've got a little bit of information, I don't know that this is going to change anything. I'm not sure I've ever gone back to talk to her right away after this. Well, maybe I have. I don't remember. We're closing in on an hour, though, and may as well uh, make sure we've rounded up this section. I always keep my options open. Yep. Bring everybody in. At least I think I'm bringing everybody in. Oh, there they are. All right. Um, footfalls on the verge of st starvation. Can Janus provide the people with provisions? Yes and no, your lordship. The question is, can such an expensive and fertile world as this one feed a few thousand void rats? Of course. We use more provisions to gnawing pests every cycle than those on footfall would eat their entire lives. But can we ship said provisions to footfall? Not a chance. Well, I can. Any cargo shuttle that leaves the surface will be a tar leaves the surface will be a target for the attack. Rebels will not hesitate to bring it down, sending flaming debris over the capital. Our silos will become targets for sabotage. Food could be poisoned or mined. The logistics of transporting supplies to footfall will be possible once the uprising has been completely crushed. It really is embarrassing to admit that even Vladim, may Ozzy take this man, is doing a better is doing better at his job at leaves a footfall than Lady Viet is at keeping her world in check. Yep, uh, that's about it. Uh, you neglected to mention the cha strange changes to the planet's flora and fauna. Uh, Magos Vinzelix is a very wise man, but his fixation on evolutionary processes seems a little extreme to me. Genus was heavily cultivated. Forests were cleared and mountains were rezzed across half the planet. It is no surprise that we are still noticing the consequences of those changes. It is possible that the planet plant mutations are connected to the waste runoff from the harvesting equipment, and the changes in wildlife behavior would be a reaction to the expansion of the cultivated area. What, are you surprised by my knowledge of the topic? Our old dynasty has dedicated itself to Tamic Janus, this plentiful yet stubborn planet. Every member of the Viat bloodline is versed in the fundamentals of planetary engineering and its consequences. Um, tech Priest mentioned ancient ruins belonging to the Z as long as we're talking about what we learned from, from the Tech Priest. 
Uh, I know to what you're referring. Strange structures of an unknown material. For the prevention of prevention of any unfortunate accidents, I ordered the area to be cleared out of bounds for all. Some things are better off left under a thick layer of dirt beyond the grasp of even the enlightened minds of the Adeptus Mechanicus. Uh, who's this person next to you? One of my ladies-in-waiting, Amelia. Amelia performs secretarial duties and helps remain in constant contact with those families who are most responsible for the productivity and prosperity of Janus. I trust my advisors implicitly, and over time, Amelia has become not merely a faithful companion, but almost my shadow. Losing her be like losing my right hand. <coughs> to bathe in the light of your greatness is a true honor, rogue trader. Um, rumors have reached me about oddities among Janus's population. I don't deny it. Some of our experiments exact a higher toll in the population than others. You see, recently, one of the noble families of Janus has taken on the difficult task of enhancing the attributes of our workers. So far, it was involved introducing experimental supplements to their food. <coughs> hmm. We are reaching the end of my voice, I think, for today. Um, their food and mental conditioning and monitored settlements. Sometimes procedures are disrupted, and part of the population suffers from side effects. The specialists of the Graves family would be better placed to inform you on the topic, but alas, they are currently engaged in the field. How refreshingly novel. The rich treating the common folk like dirt, encoding it with all the best intentions. All right. Uh, you're forcing settlements to pay their tithes in human bodies. What? Really, Abner? You speak as if you actually believe the claims of these wretched peasants. I do not ask anyone to pay the tithes in human bodies. I'm reducing the burden on the settlements, which have suffered as a result of unsuccessful experiments involving enriched food, and have gathered the worst affected subjects, those who would no longer be capable of work for further study. Some among my circle would call such a concern for the inner class a weakness, a weakness which may have incited rebellion among the emboldened net <laughs> rabble. Um, all right. Uh, all right. And it kicked us out. All right. So next episode, we are, I'm not going to make you sit through the loading screens. Uh, we're going to get back on the ship. We're going to take the shuttle and, uh, we're going to start to explore Janus on our own and see if we can find out what's causing the rebellion, uh, who, who leads it and how we can crush it under our jackbooted heels. Cause that's what we do. Right. All how, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, the emperor, the emperor protects and all that good stuff. Uh, and suffer not anybody to live. Because, that again, it's Warhammer 40k. It's the grim dark. But until then, thank you for watching, guys. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. Don't forget to subscribe. Like to be a member. Buttons down below. And we see you guys next time. Cheers. <laughs>